Hello, this will be our uh, Wednesday Bible study for June 17th, 2020. We're going to Proverbs 20 once again, and verse 20 of chapter 20 says, Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Uh, this is a pretty serious statement, and it reflects the law that the Lord gave to Israel. Leviticus 20, verse 9 says, For everyone that curseth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. He hath cursed his father or his mother, his blood shall be upon him. Of course, God's word also included how to avoid a child getting to that uh, state, hopefully. Uh, it says in Exodus 20, 12, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Uh, this important command is repeated in Deuteronomy 5, 16. Um, in Matthew 15, Jesus refers to both the commandment and the consequences for ignoring it. Paul makes a reference to it here in Ephesians 6, where he writes, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Obviously, it is important to God that children respect and obey their parents. Notice that there is no qualifier here. It doesn't say honor your father and mother as long as they give you everything you want. Uh, nor does it say children, obey your parents if they're cool. Uh, the world sometimes teaches that parents need to earn their children's respect, but that is not a biblical concept. The only prerequisite for your parents being shown respect is that they are your parents. There are commandments for parents as well. Ephesians 6, 4 says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Deuteronomy 11, starting verse 18, says, Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes, and ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them, when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. The reason for parents to teach their children the things of God is because God says so. That's enough of a reason. The reason for children to honor and obey their parents is because God says so. Uh, the parent-child relationship is very important to God. Um, and perhaps the best reason for this is found in how God looks upon us. Romans 8, 16 says the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Galatians 3, 26 says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Everyone who has trusted in Jesus Christ is, is born into the family of God. We are his children and we are to honor him. God uses our earthly relationships to teach us something about our relationship with Him. Most parents know more than their newborn child does. Uh, in fact, even if a child grows up and earns a PhD in his field, uh, his parents will always have more experience with life than he has. If each generation of parents were to set their hearts to honor God, then they would teach their children to do so as well. All of these commands in Scripture go together. Honor God, your Heavenly Father. Teach your children about Him. And to the children, learn from your God-fearing parents and honor them just as they are to honor God. Now, it's true that there are plenty of bad parents on earth. 
And we have to realize that those who reject the Lord will also reject what he teaches. But the commandments of God's word are there to teach his people. We can't expect those who reject Christ to care what God's word says. Uh, his word is there to teach his people, his children. So if we, as parents, don't teach our kids that they are expected to be respectful towards us, how can we expect them to grow into adults who respect God? If those who come to faith in Christ are not taught that it is right to honor their earthly parents, how will they understand the importance of honoring their Heavenly Father? John used an example that we can kind of tie in here in, in 1 John 4. He wrote, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? So let's take a, this thought a little bit further. How can someone who ignores and dishonors his earthly parents claim to love and honor God? Uh, before I became a parent, I was certain that I would never tell my children to do something simply because I said so. Um, since becoming a father, I've used that particular phrase more times than I can count. And I really ultimately have no problem with it. When my sons were little, I had a responsibility toward them to uh, keep them safe and to teach them uh, a lot of things, including to respect authority. They had to know that when dad or mom said something, that was enough. Uh, imagine seeing your child running after a ball that's rolled into the street. You see a car coming and you yell, stop. Hopefully your child will simply listen. If he were to continue after the ball while saying, why should I stop? Why should I listen to you? You might not live to hear the answer. God has given parents authority. The fact that they are the parent is an answer to the question, why should I listen to you? Uh, if a child learns that his parents are in a position as parents, uh, they're in a position of authority, that's enough of a reason to respect and obey them. That, that's how God set it up. Uh, and the more a child understands that, the more likely they are to grow up recognizing uh, that when God says, I said so, uh, it's more than enough reason to obey. Uh, it's interesting to note that we live in a world that has long tried to undermine parental authority. I believe that at the root of of this is the desire to undermine the authority of God. People not only curse their parents, they blame their parents for every one of their problems. And this is normal in the world around us. Um, so is it really any surprise that people commonly blame God for anything that's uh, against what they would consider good? Uh, or that they refuse to believe in God because he doesn't cater to them. Uh, kind of like a spoiled child or, you know, saying uh, to his parents, I just don't believe in you. You're not doing what I want, so I'm, you're just not there. We have a world of people thumbing their noses at God, blaming him for everything, while forgetting that all of the problems on earth have come about from the choices of man starting with the first man. So those who grow up believing it's okay to disrespect and slander their parents are likely to also slander and disrespect God. And if they leave this life without repenting of that and all that goes with it, if they leave this life not having believed in Jesus Christ, um, that last part of our Proverbs takes on quite another meaning when it says, Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. The Bible refers to those who have truly trusted in Jesus Christ as God's children. But for everyone who refuses to humble himself, confess his sin, 
to the Almighty God and trust in Christ as the one who paid for their sin. For everyone who leaves this life not having become a child of God, their eternity will be far worse than obscure darkness. You know, many times in my childhood, my dad said, because I said so. And when he said that, uh, it, was, it was enough because I had learned that dishonoring him wouldn't go well for me. Now, my dad was not an abusive man. Uh, he wasn't a cruel person, but if I insisted on dishonoring him, there, there were consequences. And I understood that. He taught me to respect his authority. And looking back, I can see that at times, he protected me from my own foolishness. Now, years later, I would be able to look at God's word and understand that it is enough for my heavenly father to just say so. And so to every child of God, I want to say, remember that your heavenly father uh, is the only perfect father there is. And he knows all things. He is almighty. And remember that he has made promises to you that no one can take away. And therefore, let me encourage you to be glad to honor him and to simply do what is right because your loving Heavenly Father says so. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you. Have a great day.